good morning or good afternoon depending on whenever this presentation takes place for today's presentation david pradhan from the jawaharlal nehru university in new delhi and i from the fiji national university would be talking about the legal geography of labor and climate change in fiji so to begin with to begin with the introduction uh Contemporary climate change due to global warming caused by increased anthropogenic greenhouse gas emissions uh, has an intensifying effect on the weather, extreme weather conditions, which leads to the destruction of uh, the natural environment, which includes the flora and fauna around us. The changes in temperature and rainfall patterns are expected to increase the in effective uh, range of pathogens and vectors threaten and big species increase precipitation runoff decrease water table uh, affect forested uh, vegetation cover diminish soil fertility and reduce agricultural area and productivity when you look at fiji constitutionally and legally fiji is a unitary egalitarian multi-ethnic multilingual secular parliamentary democratic republic but despite its laws we present a unique case of uh, conflictual socio political praxis based on the racial identity which owes to the origins of the british policy of large scale transplantation of indentured uh, laborers from british india to fiji moving on the british policy of discriminating uh, indentured laborers from uh, its uh, crown colonies began in the last quarter of the 19th century and this was a result of uh, the meteorological uh, el nino phenomena the second the second reason for this uh, uh, indentured labor system was due to the rising prices of cotton caused by the american civil war and also due to the location of the melanesian islands that promoted the british to conquer fiji the military subjugation of the kaidolo indigenous peoples annexation of their lands while simultaneously permitting a weak puppet government of the indigenous chiefs led by the tuiviti to deal with the rebellious islanders facilitated the establishment of a uh, plantation economy by the british capitalists so in 1874 british had the, uh, complete control of the fijian islands and secured the cession of sovereignty by the nominal ruler who was the tuiviti the tuiviti was allowed by the british to exercise authority a customary authority over the indigenous community in the form of direct uh, delegated rule and uh, by 1875 and 1876 there was an outbreak of the epidemic of measles and this was caused by the uh, black bears who were brought into fiji and also by the slave ships vessel uh, that arrived in fiji and due to this uh, epidemic of measles one third of fiji's total population perished and the impact of this uh, epidemic was so devastating for the indigenous people of fiji and its repercussions were so severe that cotton plantation collapsed as replaced by the sugarcane plantation so uh, this is when the influx of the indentured laborers from british india began it began in 1879 where ship loads of indentured laborers were brought to work on the sugarcane plantation due to the collapse of the cotton plantations so at the initial stages uh, when the indentured laborers were brought into fiji to work on the sugarcane plantations they had two options and those were either to stay back here after their contract five years expires or go back to india and many chose to stay back while some also chose to go back so that is uh, uh, what the indentured system was all about moving on to climate change 
climate change, as we all must be knowing, this is a, a key word or very serious pressure issue that we all are uh, facing going right now. And Fiji is no exception. And uh, Fiji is uh, vulnerable to changes in weather, cyclone, sea level rise, storm surges, and rising tides, uh, damage to the mango and coral reefs, fluctuations in precipitation and temperature, alienation of groundwater, and fresh, fresh water, and also droughts and flooding we normally experience on a daily basis now. And uh, rising sea levels uh, together with warmer temperatures and stronger El Nino patterns increase our vulnerability to deadly food and waterborne diseases. So we are prone to or vulnerable to many sicknesses and diseases, waterborne and uh, yeah, food and waterborne diseases which we were not uh, familiar with before. And these diseases have come into being due to the impacts of climate change. And the changing weather extremes also threaten our livelihood. Since uh, PG is the island nation country, we are surrounded by sea. We only depend on sea, on the sea and the land also for our survival, for our livelihoods. And due to the rising sea levels, salt water intrusion, we are at a risk of losing our lands and uh, uh, food productivity. Uh, productivity and food security is also at risk. Uh, many villages in Fiji have been relocated due to the rising sea levels, uh, which which was approaching the villages. So the government made a, an attempt to to relocate them to higher grounds for their safety. And we also have ocean acidification, uh, which affect the marine organisms. And besides that, we have uh, damage to the ecosystem, marine ecosystem. We also face many other problems, uh, health issues, uh, increase in uh, uh, temperatures that we are experiencing now, uh, unusual uh, weather extremes, and uh, increased incidences of uh, natural hazards such as uh, uh, cyclones. Cyclones have become very common here in Fiji, uh, which I can see. In the last few years, we have been having uh, cyclones of uh, very intense magnitude, uh, highest uh, category. Category five cyclones have been affecting us uh, for the last few years, starting from 2016, if I'm not wrong. So these uh, disasters are uh, reinforced by this uh, climate change, and they cause uh, massive destruction, which is in millions of Fijian dollars damage to infrastructure, roads, transportation, communication systems, waterborne diseases, and livelihoods of people are all at risk due to the impacts of climate change that we are experiencing now. And to help solve these problems of climate change, the government of Fiji is trying its best to come up with policies, rules, and regulations to uh, save our island country. And some of the ways in which the government is trying to protect uh, or mitigate the impacts of climate change is through, uh, they have come up with this uh, climate change bill, which was just passed in parliament a few weeks ago. And the government is also trying its best to educate uh, the people of Fiji and create awareness on climate change, how to adapt and mitigate the impacts, uh, the impacts of climate change. Uh, the government has tried to incorporate climate change issues into the curriculum so that the children as well as the whole of Fiji are educated and are well prepared to face the brunt of climate change. And the government is also trying to uh, carry out tree planting initiatives and the, the ban on the use of styrofoams and plastics which all lead to uh, climate change. So this is what uh, our government is trying to do at this point in time and I hope it will uh, keep, uh, it, will, it will help solve many problems that we face due to climate change. And uh, uh, all in all, that's all from my side for this presentation. Please feel free to ask if you have any questions after this presentation. Thank you very much.